Greetings, everybody, and welcome to Madrid Ball. I hope you all are safe and sound, and as you know, the international break is upon us, and this isn't the most intriguing time for those who are invested in the thrills and spills of club football. But as I had said earlier, there would be some of the players who would be giving some interviews here and there, and today we are going to discuss the words and the recent performance of Martin Odegaard. We also have some injury updates regarding Tony Cruz and Fede Valverde, and I must say, things have got a bit tricky for Madrid. So we'll discuss all of that and let's get started. Let's start with the Tony Cruz injury update. This is the biggest talking point at the moment. We are always apprehensive about the health of our players when the international break arrives. And again, the FIFA virus has struck Madrid. The German Football Federation website yesterday announced that Tony Cruz has picked up a groin injury. Considering how these groin injuries can be problematic if not treated properly, Germany decided to send Cruz back to Madrid and he wouldn't play in any of the qualifiers against Iceland, Romania, and not Macedonia. So we do have a major issue here, especially considering how influential Tony Cruz has been for us this season. He has been one of a few players who has been consistently putting up good numbers, but the good news here is that Cruz still has time to recover. This isn't a serious injury. The major news outlets like Marca and AS both go on to claim that Cruz will be available for the match against Liverpool, but he may not be ready for the game against Eibar. The same news was also confirmed by Messeranka Rodriguez, so we see many indicators pointing towards Tony Cruz returning against Liverpool and I hope he regains maximum fitness because we definitely need his qualities when we take on a quality side. The midfield is our strength. We have heard many a times from the players and from Zidane that Cruz is vital in deciding the tempo of the team. So you can understand his importance from this statement and to make things worse, that's not the only problem we have. We have got a double whammy here. We also have some unfortunate news regarding Valverde and as per Marca, the Uruguayan did not take part in training and he worked on an individual basis in the gym. He has picked up a muscular injury once again and it is expected that he will require two to three weeks to return to full fitness. Some sources also go on to claim that he will 100% miss the matching as Eibar. So we see the midfield of Real Madrid has again been crippled and if we talk about Valverde, he must be absolutely frustrated. In the matches that he has played since his return, he was looking like he was regaining his rhythm, he was regaining sharpness, but this muscle injury has again halted progress. It has been a difficult season for him, he has been in and out of the side and him being out certainly doesn't help our cause. The attributes that Valverde possesses would have helped against a side like Liverpool Liverpool press high, they're an intense side, they are physical and Valverde could have been the antidote. But if we are to believe the reports, he may miss the first leg against Liverpool. This is a major blow, we have a season defining 10 days after the international break and these news certainly doesn't fill us up with positivity. And if we think about Zidane, he must be cursing his luck at the moment, the four in the midfield was looking like something Zidane may have been working on with Liverpool in mind, but the availability of Cruz and Valverde is in jeopardy and now Zidane may have to cook something different. He may have to find some different recipe of success and I actually was looking forward to seeing more of Cruz, Modric, Casemiro and Valverde playing together. I like the balance in the side with four of them in the midfield but now the possibility of seeing that is dwindling and Zidane, he will have a mammoth task in hand if both the players are not available. We have Liverpool and Barcelona on the horizon and this certainly is the time to be firing on all cylinders. We have to be ready and hopefully Zidane Zidane will have a decent squad with decent options to win the upcoming battles. Moving on, let's talk about one of our players on loan who has been catching the eye of many with his performances. Yes, I'm talking about Martin Odegaard. He has been enjoying his time with the Gunners and slowly and steadily, it does look like he's returning to his best form. His recent performance against West Ham did get him a few admirers as well. We already see many calls from the Arsenal fans asking the club to make the move a permanent one. And why wouldn't they? We know Odegaard on his day looks like an absolutely fantastic player. When he is in full swing, it is difficult to contain him. And against West Ham, he was simply splendid. He was the difference maker, everything was going through Odegaard, and he looks much more confident as a player. The forward looking passes are coming off, he's doing those step overs in front of defenders, and it does look like Arteta and Odegaard share a very special relationship with each other. Odegaard in his recent interview had these words for Arteta, and I quote, he's incredible, I have learnt a lot from him, I just need to sharpen 
up in my ears and pay attention. He is fantastic. So definitely this is one of those examples where we see how the trust of a manager is very important for players. We have known Odegaard for long. He has a lot of quality. He is not afraid to take risks while making those forward looking passes. He truly thrives in the attacking midfield role and that is where Arteta has been using him. You can have a look at the stats here. Martin Odegaard sits at the top when it comes to big chances created per 90 minutes. He has created 17 big chances in 776 minutes. He has been creating one major chance every 45.1 minute and that places him at the top of the pile of all Arsenal players. Arsenal have wanted a creative artist for a long time and now at least Odegaard is looking like the solution for them. So it is good to see that he has settled in North London very quickly. He has adapted to the pace of the Premier League and that is good news for us as well. If Odegaard comes back as a confident player who is much more improved, it certainly would be advantage Madrid. But the big lingering question is, would Odegaard want to return? And I am saying this because in his recent interview, Odegaard also spoke about his future and he said that he he wants stability and development. Just like any other player, he wants to continue playing regular minutes, but he kept his cards close to his chest while speaking about his future. I haven't thought about what will happen in the summer. The deal with Arsenal is until the end of the season. We'll see what happens this summer. I've said things before that I still stand by. Stability and development are the key words. So you have heard the words of Odegaard and where he will play in the future is all up in the air. Will he come back to Madrid under Zidane? Will he play at Arsenal? Will Mr. Perez cash in on Odegaard to generate funds for a superstar attacker? Or will Zidane stay beyond this season? These are some very big questions that none of us have the answer to, but surely in a few months time we'll have all these questions sorted out. And of course you know very well we'll discuss all of that over here. So that is all I have in this video and now it's your time to let me know about your thoughts on Odegaard and of course your thoughts on Cruz and Valverde will also be appreciated. I'll see you soon. Till then, take care, glory to Madrid, and as always, a la Madrid!